before mine eyes cease to do evil. And the 18th verse says, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We thank God for his word. Here, he always has a remnant. God always redeems his people. He will never, ever leave us alone. But one thing we found out at the beginning of this year, 2020, is identified as uh, meaning uh, divine judgment. What does divine judgment mean? Well, divine judgment, uh, to put it in short, it means that God himself sets himself up to be the prosecutor, if you would, the defense attorney, uh, the jury, and he becomes the judge, the one who pronounces the verdict in your case. So divine judgment carries with it favor. So even though we see where we are uh, in this pandemic and we wonder when we will come out, uh, how long, Lord, will it be? I've inquired of the Lord, how long will it be? And, and, and right now it's going to be until he decides that it won't be. But one thing that we found out about the children of Israel, which is like unto us today, the Lord gets us out of trouble, and then we get back in trouble. We make decisions and rules and say we're going to abide by them, and then before it is over with, we go and toss it to the wayside. We forget about it, and, and then there it goes. But I want to bring to mind to you, uh, you are hearing words such as the ideology. Let me define that for you. That means it is a body of ideas that reflect uh, social needs, uh, aspirations of individuals and groups. And Paul, as a Pharisee, they had ideology. They had behaviors contribute to those beliefs. And whenever you bring a group of people together with their beliefs and they push forth those beliefs, they come very, very strong uh, in a society. In case of the Pharisees, it was 300 years that they put forth these ideas, the Pharisees. When we look at the United States, we find that the African American, the Blacks, the Negro, we came here by way of slave ships. <laughs> and it's been 400 years since we came. But you know what? That same ideology and oppression exists continuously in the society that we live in. And so then we look at today and we see uh, people being pushed down in the street, being beat in the street. Uh, commanders are coming forth and bringing in the military army that we pay taxes for to cover our safety in the nations and abroad and that military is suggested to be used against us. God be, God forbid, it is a damnable evil. Now, the thing and the wisdom I want you to get today is that this is a systematic oppression and depression of the people of God. But the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all the people that dwell therein. So the oppression 
uh, not only is it against the people of God, but it is against God. Uh, he did not bring his people into any type of oppression. When you look at Genesis, you will find that Adam was placed in the garden. Him and Eve, they were given assignments and they were free. So when I look at the ideology of oppression, then I know that is against God's rule because he gave man dominion over the land, over the sea, over the birds of the earth, but he never gave him dominion over people. So slavery was a lie. It was a lie in the inception. It was a lie on this land. And not only that, our people were brought to this land in chains. Now, if they had come willingly, they would not have been chained. But they were brought here already in a condition that would have them oppressed, depressed. They changed their names. They would not allow them to speak their languages. Why? Because they wanted to dismantle everything thing that was in the people that come to this nation. They wanted to tear them down and not give them an identity. But I thank God for Jesus because he always have a ram in the bush. So divine justice, God is not pleased with the way that we have been going on in America. He is not pleased around this globe. How do I know that? I am convinced of that because when I watch the world news, I see people protesting around the globe. You know, it's amazing that Jesus would come to uh, earth and would be that sacrifice. You know, there's always going to be a blood sacrifice before the Lord atones for the evil done to his people. I am very heartbroken and sorrowful for that family of the floors, but I thank God that he chose a man. He was not a, uh, a well-educated man. Uh, uh, he was not a schoolmaster. Uh, he was not a preacher of the gospel. Uh, he was just a man in the community. But God, he brought Jesus in the same way, just a man. Somebody asked the question, well, who is this Jesus? And, and, and the reply was, well, isn't that Joseph's son, uh, the carpenter's son? Oh, yeah, well, he's not very important. God always has a ram in the bush. God will never, ever leave his people defenseless. So then we look at what is going on. We see the oppression. Uh, we see the fight that's going on in the streets. Uh, we see uh, wars breaking out everywhere. We see that we have liars who are heading our government, who are inciting wars. We have liars in our government who are inciting other nations to come against one another. All of this, why? Because as Isaiah said, we must repent. We must repent. And so for the believer, how do we repent? We must become godly sorrowful. What do we say to those who do not believe? Well, I want to introduce Jesus Christ to you today and, and ask you, why don't you try him? You tried everything else and it didn't work. Why not try Jesus Christ? the savior of this world. His father established it. It all belongs to him. So then we see that the court, the seat of judgment has been set.
When we find a people who, where there is injustice upon the people, you will find that they will become paralyzed in a state. So see, we see the paralysis of the people who don't know what to do. We see the people don't know where to go. Looking for and listening for a voice. Well, the voice that we must hear is the voice of God. And how can the people hear unless they have a preacher? So I'm one of those crying out like John in the wilderness saying, repent repent tell god you sorry it starts judgment starts at the house of god first and we have seen judgment hit the house of god never in all my years have i seen the preachers leave and go home like this i said lord you taking the pastors what will the sheep do? Well, the enemy would believe that, well, if you kill the shepherd, then the sheep will scatter. But God has a remnant of preachers and pastors that are being raised up in this earth right now that will take up the banner. I see the young people fighting. I see them protesting. I see them with the banner. The word of God that he called the old because we know the way and the young because they have the strength. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. So then when you see injustice, it hinders the people from becoming all that the Lord has allowed them to become in the earth. When you have systems as we have in the United States, there are hidden agendas. Nobody is being upfront about the objectives. They want to accomplish what they will accomplish for their specific group. The Bible says we must clothe those that are naked and we must feed those that are hungry. We are to take care of our widows. We are to feed the people. But yet and still we look on the other side and we see that food stamps are cut. Why? Because they don't act the way we think they should act. We see gas cut off. Why? Well, the people can't pay their gas if they don't have a job. So then what you do? Well, then we have housing. Landlords leaving uh, ghetto-type housing and, 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 and infestation in the housing. And then they put the people out of those houses. Well, where must they go? They're on the street. And then look at here. Then you have the uh, 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 police people come along and tell the people on the street, you can't be on the street. You've got to move. Oh, my God, my God, my God. We must repent as a nation. We must lay down the weapons of oppression, the weapons of discord, the weapons of, of just the crazy, the crazy in our society. We, as a people of God, we must come together. We must come together in prayer. We must, the Bible says that some of these devils, they won't come out unless there's fasting and there is praying. If the church don't pray, who will pray? If the church doesn't fast, who will fast? It has nothing to do with denomination, whether you're Baptist, your holiness, you're independent. The Bible says, if my people, his people, he come to us, we have a responsibility to pray in this world. We have a responsibility to pray for our enemies. I guarantee you, if we pray, if we come together as a nation, we will see the hand of God move. His word says that he'll forgive us of our sins, that he will bring us back 
to him if we come together as a people. And the other thing we want to look for is that what happens with the people, they lose strength. So, oh, they lose strength. They can't fight. So instead of fighting with the intellect or, or, or with the books, what they do is take to the street and they begin to war and they begin to fight against. They don't know what they're fighting against other than the establishment. Young people, that's not the answer. I want you to protest. Your Michigan Constitution says you have the right to assemble and protest. Your United States Constitution says you have a right to assemble and protest. That is what you have the right to do, to allow your grievances to be known. And I thank God for your strength, and I thank God for what you are doing. But we need direction. And direction comes in the word of God. The peace is disturbed. There's no peace when Jesus himself is the prince of peace. If you invite him into your life and into your heart, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will allow you to rest. People are not sleeping. People are not resting. People are upset. People are fighting. People are in discord. Oh, God. You know, one thing about God, I, I talked to the Lord concerning, I said, Father, we're in a pandemic, and this virus is killing people. And then I see my babies out there with no mask on. Well, don't be tricked. Put your mask on. This virus is still in the earth and it is killing people. Put your mask on and hold your sign up high. But we as the elders are going to pray and I'm telling you, God is going to move because we as a nation are coming together. We must come together. We have no other way out. And when we bring it together, then there's strength in the body. When young people and, and old people have a direction and they have a plan, then strength comes to the body. Peace comes to the mind. Know this, the enemy wants to keep you confused. He wants to wear you out. He wants to tire you out. He wants to take your very life. That's what he wants to do. But I pray against him day and night. You shall live, young people. You shall live. You will declare the works of the Lord. And you shall be accomplishing everything that God has called you to do and to be. I call on our churches. Come together. Let us come together and go to the throne room of God. He will hear our cry. It doesn't matter what faith you are. Just all we want to do is be on one accord. When you get on one accord, the enemy cannot tear down the kingdom of God. It is through divisiveness that he destroys the kingdom. A house divided against itself cannot stand. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if the mother is going to the left and the father is going to the right, your house will be divided and your home will be unhappy. But I'm saying to you, if you come together as one on one accord we have one common enemy and that enemy is the devil that's that's the enemy let me tell you something just a few uh, for those who deal with spiritual warfare understand this you cannot fight a spiritual war with natural tools it will never work a devil don't care nothing about your books and your learning and your education. He going to keep on coming. But if you tell that enemy to go to the lake by the auspices of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
this oppressive spirit, you must go, damnable enemy. Oppression and depression, you must go. We cannot fight one another. Understand this point. A demon does not respond to natural tools. He only responds to spiritual tools. So don't try to fight the demon of, 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 of oppression with, oh, well, we're going to talk to her and we're going to talk. No, 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 no. These people have set up systems, as I told you in the beginning. As the Pharisees, they've set up systems. They have ideology. And know this for certain. There is a benefit in this thing. There's a benefit in this thing. There is a benefit to somebody's pocket. The stock market, how do we have senators that sit in high places? They pull out of the stock market before a collapse. Oh, they have privilege to the information, but they say they didn't use their privilege in information. They just decided to do that before time. Now, we are not crazy. People, come on, use your head. We're not crazy. But the same system says, well, you know what? That's okay. But if you and I had it in it, we would be in cuffs right now and sitting up in somebody's jail awaiting trial. That's what happened to us. Why? Because we are not a part of that social system. You must understand that you have to understand every demon that you are fighting. We're fighting a demon of hatred. We're fighting a demon of, of division, divisiveness, hatred. Where has it come from? Anytime you kick against an establishment, they're coming against you with all that they have. Why? Because if you upset the establishment, then you upset their kingdoms. It's about kingdoms. It's about uh, mon monarchies. It's about I'm in charge. It's arrogance, the demon of arrogance, the demon of pride, demon of selfishness, and have no love for the people of God. This is a spiritual war that we have broken out on us. So remember these points. Remember, remember, you cannot fight spiritual with natural. We must put on the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness, Ephesians chapter six. We've got to be girded up in our faith. We've got to be girded up in fasting. We got to be girded up in the word of God. It is only God that can bring a pandemic that affects the world. Don't fool yourself. Everybody want to bl blame China. But God got a way that we know not of, and he will bring us to our knees. I often say he put us out of his church because we wasn't acting right. So now we at home, we on the street, where we supposed to be to get the people into the kingdom. It, we, we use our church facilities to feed the hungry, clothe the naked. We use it to get instructions uh, for our people. We use it for seminars to educate, to bring forth the kingdom of God, not to go up in there and say how wonderful, look what we did. One of our long-standing uh, uh, preachers of the word of God, in his book he wrote concerning himself, he said what got him in trouble was that he began to build what he thought was ministry. And he left God out. It was all about him building ministry. So no matter what went on, he was concentrating on that when he left the people way behind. You cannot build ministry unless you are building people. The people are the ministry. It's all about us doing what Jesus did. Jesus came on the scene, and after he left the wilderness, they say that he, the Bible says that he 
healed all of them. We have that same power in us today. It is invested in us to heal the minds of the people, to heal their spirits and their souls, to help them, to, to cultivate them, to bring them into the presence of God. I, I love the song my sisters sing about, I like living this kind of life because it is a blessed life. You want to live a blessed life. That's what we want. We want peace on a daily, daily in, in, in entering in and coming out. We want to live in peace. Nobody wants to live in hell. Nobody wants to come home to their house and live in hell. They don't want to be in the streets and be in hell and then on the job in hell and then come home and be in hell. No, 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 no. You want to be in peace. So I offer Jesus Christ to you on this day as your Lord and as your Savior. God will take care of you. He, his favor is resting on you. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you turn it all over to him and you're going to live for the Lord, he just says, confess him, confess that he is the Lord, that he died, he went to the cross, you believe he is the son of God, that he rose and he's coming back. I promise you, he's coming back again. So you want your life so that you're ready when he comes back again. Father, we thank you for your divine judgment. His divine judgment, he's going to work it out in your favor. I know there's been great pain because there's been great loss brought to so many families. Over 110,000, I believe the last number was or greater of those who have lost their life in this battle. But know that the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. And he shall save us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray now for all of those who have heard this word and have received Jesus Christ and would like to receive Jesus Christ right now. Father, we ask that in their homes, wherever they may be, in their automobiles, if they lift their hands toward heaven, and just say, Father, I receive you, Jesus. Come into my life. I want to walk with you and learn of you and be with you, Father, in that great getting up morning. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for every pastor that is on the air, for every leader that is working in the kingdom. Father God, we ask that you strengthen them now, that you give them clear sight, clear vision in the name of the Lord Jesus. Help them on their journey and help them on their way as they make their journey from place to place to take care of the people of God. Help them, God, every church, every church that is assembled in your name, wherever they may be across this country. Father, my prayer is that we all come together in the unity of the faith. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Just to say to you before I leave this spot is that we are hosting a prayer vigil for the nation. And all you have to do is call in. The information is on our advertisement and become a part of this. We're going to be fasting for three days. Uh, I believe it's June 29th, uh, the 30th, and July 1st. We're going to be fasting and praying together. It does not matter what church you belong to. We're going before God. We need this pandemic lifted. And we need strategies uh, brought forth for our police department, for our mayors, for our governors, and for the presidency of this United States. We need 
divine justice in these places. And we are going to be fasting and praying. Overseer Joyce, uh, Stacy is one of the leaders in this and along with myself and Zion and all of our pastors, we are coming together in prayer because we want to see God move. Just as God moved in Isaiah, all he wants us to do is turn from our wicked ways and he'll heal the land and he'll forgive us of our sin. God be, be with you until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Back to our pastor.